Shalom, giving all praise to Yehovah, Shem, 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 excuse me, and um, Shalom to the hopefully elect out there. <clears throat> I'm going to entitle this video, Jeremiah 50, verse 33, has nothing to do with ancient ba Babylon, or is, not, or is not talking about, or referring to ancient Babylon, it's talking about this Babylon that we're currently, currently in today, which is uh, the U.S., America, Canaan, the new Canaan. So you have this video put up by uh, uh, Daily Edification uh, 4, which is a possible bar. He was uh, commenting on a video that uh, the elder, um, the elder from the elder from Texas, from Dallas, Yashawamba had put up. And um, pretty much all I heard was, um, I heard a little voice of, I wasn't sure it was Yashawamba at first, but it was ya definitely Yashawamba, uh, Elder Yashawamba. And, um, but most of what I heard was what Doc, Dr. Brown speaking and what, uh, what Kabbalah was uh, uh, saying, speaking on. Anyway, I'm gonna let you hear this. This is um, 30, 30, minutes and eight seconds in and it's a 52 second video 52 minute video and i'll come back and i'm and i'll i may i may i'm definitely going to go to uh jeremiah 50 verse 33 and hand tackle that but i may jump around or i may meet i may try to read the whole thing so because because people know precepts they'll go to this precept give you that precept Somebody on the street says, well, let go up a couple of verses above that. And then you go up to a couple of verses, then you're surprised. Now you got to answer that. And you never went through the whole passage or the whole chapter. So sometimes it is, go to, it is go to, good to go into whole chapters. Okay, so let's listen. Well, check out how he breaks down verse 33. I believe it's from Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. Check out his breakdown. Jeremiah's prophesied over 2,500 years ago. Uh, his ministry begins in the 13th year of Josiah, which was around 627 BC. So he's prophesying more than 2,500 years ago. Listen, the Lord hosts the people of Israel are oppressed, and so too the people of Judah. All their captives held them, they refused to let them go. But so this happened uh, over time as the Jewish people and the tribes were in exile. The Redeemer is mighty, his name is the Lord of hosts, he will champion their cause, so as to get rest in the earth and unrest in the inhabitants of Babylon. So, number one, the Jewish people were brought back from Babylon. Now, some remained there. And they, they were I keep saying Jewish people, as in reference to the Jews. Right? Let me come back to that. Let me come back to that. Let me come back to that. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the people of Israel are oppressed, speaking of ancient Israel. So that's Michael Brown reading. Now, check out how he breaks down. That verse that he's reading, I believe it's from Jeremiah, the uh, 50th chapter. Check out his breakdown. And Jeremiah's prophesied over 2,500 years ago. Um, his ministry begins in the 13th year of Josiah, which was around 627 BC. So he's prophesying more than 2,500 years ago. Listen, the Lord hosts the people of Israel are oppressed, and so to the people of Judah. Well, Said so the people of Israel are oppressed, and so to the people of Judah. Um, and King James, it's. Uh, Judah and Israel were oppressed together. So let's listen on. Let's listen. These guys don't understand prophecies. Vocab Malone damn sure doesn't understand prophecies. Uh, Dr. Brown doesn't understand prophecies. And if they understood prophecies, they would, they would know why we're out here as so-called Black Americans and people of uh, North, Central, and South America of Indian and Negro descent um, and Latino descent of Israel. This is why we say that. This is why we say that, uh, because it's a fulfillment of many prophecies. When you go to the various books, mainly Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, and Jeremiah 50, is definitely talking about us over here in the new Babylon. He doesn't understand that. He says, and they go back to Babylon. No, they or go back to Israel and all this other nonsense. He, he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand prophecy. See, the best way to deal with these so-called scholars and doctors of the scriptures, having doctor, doctorate in Bible history, they don't understand uh, prophecies. 
uh, the, uh, theological sem seminaries, which I call theological cemeteries, they don't understand prophecies. And um, Vocab Malone is completely clueless when it comes to prophecies. That's why they stay away from the prophecies. Well, the captains held them. They refused to let them go. That's America. This happened uh, over time as the Jewish people and tribes were in exile. Where Adir is mighty, his name is Lord of Hosts. He will champion their cause so as to be rest in the earth and unrest in the earth. That's getting ready to happen. It happens in Babylon. Uh, so, number one, the Jewish people were brought back. Why don't you say Israelites? It didn't say Jewish people. That's their term. This is like the word Semitic instead of Shemitic. It's Shemitic. Semitic is their word. That's why they. That's why they'll say if we say something against them in any way, it's a anti-Semitic. Which that's not even a word. And they know. And they know that it's Shem because when they see the word Yahweh, they'll they'll they are taught in their synagogues. And I know this firsthand because. Uh, Jewish people that study the scriptures that read Hebrew. And I did this experiment. I pulled out the, 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 the uh, Torah, the Tanakh. And um, I said, read that. And I pointed to the word Yahweh. And they said Hashem. I said, where does it say Hashem? Oh, well, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. But our rabbis in school, they say, uh, when you see that word, Yahweh, you say Hashem. And vocab never gets on them about that. Like, Vocab had rolled up on a couple number of years ago. They had rolled up on uh, the Dallas GMS Dallas camp, and when they came across the word Jesus, they said Yahweh Shai. So, so this guy, a vocab said, "Well, why'd you say Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Shai is not there. Well, why don't you go ask some small hats, them JJs, why when they come across the word Yahweh, they say Hashem? Now the reason is because the Most High's name is dreadful. That's what we always go to." See the average JJ doesn't doesn't know that. All they know is they they taught they taught in synagogue. Come across that word, say Hashem. So this guy he doesn't he doesn't know what's going on. I keep saying Jewish people, as in reference to the Jews, right? Well, what about the rest of the tribe? Because the, the verse says the children of Israel and the children of Judah. And each tribe had their own land. So when you guys went back to the land of Israel, you went back in the land in, to the land of Israel as Jews, J-E-W-S. So wait a minute, where's the other if is if, if it's if the prophecy is fulfilled, but you coming back, well, where are the Gadites? You have to say, well, this is the land of Gad. Let's get all the Gadites, let's put them down in Gad. That goes into in, uh, inheritance. Uh, this is the, the tribe of Issachar. Okay, let's put them. So when you go to certain places in Israel today, you can go, oh, well, let's go down to uh, the land of Issachar. Or let's go, let's go, uh, or let's go up to the land of Issachar, or let's go down to uh, the land of Benjamin, which is which would be Gilead, uh, Gilead. So they're not the people because they're saying that they're, that they're Jews. They're not saying that they're Israelites. And where does the 12 tribes come into play? Ezekiel chapter uh, 37. Major uh, prophecy, Ezekiel chapter 37. <laughs> they can't explain it. And then where's King David? <laughs> they, they settled the land and referred to as the state um, in 1948. We're talking before I was born. My mother was what a child. We're talking 48, 58, 68, 78, 88, 98, 2008, 2018. We're talking uh, over 70 years. Where's King David at? Where the fuck is King David? <laughs> that's a, that's a, a, a topic for you, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Ryan Love. Where the F is King David? Let's listen to a little bit more. That's the whole nation, not just the so-called Jewish people. First of all, there's no such thing as Jewish. The term is Jew, right? And the Jews consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So what about the rest of the tribes? Right? The verse clearly says the children of Israel and the children of Judah. So that's all 12 tribes would be oppressed in this Babylon. They keep saying Jewish people. 
But right there, you see, you see his um, his interpretation is weak. It's weak. Okay. For over 2,500 years in a continuous community, um, but otherwise exiles did come back, as is recounted in many of the Old Testament books. Uh, and and the Babylonian kingdom was subdued and did did, uh, did fall to the Medo-Persian kingdom that followed. Uh, so, but did it fall by the destroying winds? The answer is no. All right, there's a Babylon that's written in Jeremiah the 51st chapter, and it speaks about. Now it's going to be destroyed. The Lord is going to destroy it by destroying winds. Yeah, it likens Babylon fall to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, ancient Babylon, uh, during the time of uh, Daniel, during when the, the actually the, it was the Medes that came in, then the Persians. Uh, the, the you had the Medo-Persian Empire. Persian Empire started with the Medes, and it pretty much ended with the Persians being on top. That's why in history they called the per Medi Persian media medium Pers Persian Empire. They did there was no it was a surgical strike. They got the king of Babylon when he was drunk, and his lords were drunk. They rushed in, they killed the king. There was a writing on the wall, and that was it. They didn't blow down, they didn't burn, burn anything down. So there was no hot wind, there was no uh, fire. When you read about Babylon in Isaiah 13 and various Isaiah 34, Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 50, all these prophecies that speak about Babylon, including Revelation, the book of Revelation, is talking about how Babylon is going to be destroyed by fire. Ain't nobody stood afar off saying, talking about seeing the smoke of Babylon, ancient Babylon. So he doesn't understand. Like I said, these apologists do not understand uh, pro the prophetic part of the scriptures. So the way to deal with them, just go to the provinces, because they don't understand. Was that that Babylon that Michael Brown is talking about? The answer is no. And for confirmation of that, all you got to do is go to Daniel the fifth chapter. The transition between uh, Belshazzar and Darius the Mede. There's no destroying wind. Okay. <laughs> Once again, Michael Brown, you failed. This, this did happen. However, there seems to be a final fulfillment that's being pointed to as well. It could just be there seems to be a final fulfillment. Oh, good. Oh, he's right on that. But the, the final fulfillment is talking about now. That First, we have to rise up. The bones got to come together. Bone to his bone. Sinew to his sinew. Skin. Blood. And a covering over us. That's what's got to happen first. And that's happening right now. Give me a second.
Forgive me for that. Let's listen to a little bit more. You said that if this did happen, what? There seems to be a, there seems to be. Hey, there's a scripture where it says we have a, a, a more sure word of testimony. You got to be sure when you're breaking down these prophecies, man. This just shows you that Michael Brown doesn't know what he's talking about. As, again, as it is written, we have a sure more word of prophecy. There seems to be. Let me bring that back again. Probably call him Michael Brown. No, oh, we don't know what that is. A person came on that phone. Uh, so this this did happen. However, this this did happen. Babylon being destroyed, right? Mind you, when you go in the book of Jeremiah, the fiftieth chapter, the Babylon is talking about that's going to be destroyed by the destroyed wind. No one will ever inhabit it. And it's telling the rational one about this. So that can't be talking about the real Babylon it was located in what is known as Iraq. Clearly, you see people living there. So, what is this Babylon that when it's destroyed, no one will inhabit it? Huh? Michael Brown? Come on. You're free. To be a final fulfillment that's being pointed to as well. We have just been resting. I'm glad he said there's going to be a final fulfillment. A final fulfillment. So, let's see what he says on that. This guy is a clown. He's a clown. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's why all the Alphabet members know that. Um, an enemy, Babylon, that brings rest to the whole earth. But historically, this happened when the Jewish. Oh, that brings rest. Ah, that brings rest to the whole earth. So, what he's pre pretty much saying, he's not actually coming out saying it, but, but he's pretty much putting it out there, implying that. There's going to be another prophecy. Let me bring that back. Let me bring that back. That's why all the rest of them are part of that. An enemy Babylon that brings rest to the whole earth. But historically, the enemy Babylon that brings earth, uh, rest to the whole earth. When the when the meat when the Darius put out the order to kill the. Uh, the king of Babylon and his lords, and take the kingdom, make it a province of, uh, which ultimately became a, a province of the medial Persian Empire. That didn't bring peace to the whole earth. Those people doing, the northern kingdom was already on the other side of the earth. So they didn't even know what was going on. So it's de definitely talking about now. So who, who or what, what is what is, is uh, Babylon? He admit. We'll give him credit. At least he admits that um, Jer, uh, Jeremiah chapter fifty and Jer, 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 Jeremiah chapter fifty-one. Excuse me, but we're focusing on Jeremiah chapter fifty. He's saying that there's another prophecy to come to pass. So I don't know if it already came to pass. I don't know what he's going to say. This is the first time he's listening to this because I didn't. I didn't get into the debate at all. It was. We're like watching paint dry. I didn't get, like I said, I didn't listen to too much of uh, what uh, Alizar, Priest Alizar had to say, but I got really turned off like the first 17 minutes of uh, Dr. Brown. I said, man, I can't watch this shit. You know, I can't watch this. And I said, these debates don't really work because, you know, you get a certain amount of time, you know, you get 17 minutes, you get five minutes of rebuttal and you can only speak on this subject. You can't bring another subjects. That the Lord, when the Lord dealt with the scribes and the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they didn't bring out rules. Okay, we're going to have discussion. These are the rules. You can only speak on this. And you only have 55 minutes to say that. That's bullshit. The debates are, the debates are, uh, it's, it's bullshit having debates. It's bullshit. 
because they'll tell you, oh, well, you shouldn't have said this. And, you know, we're going to deduct 10 minutes from your 15 minutes. So now you got five. It is, it's all bullshit. Spirit is not killing you. Okay. Yeah, you know why? Because he's a small one. And he's he's Doctor <laughs> he's Doctor Quas, Doctor Quas. Let's get it. The Book of Psalms, one forty-seven. Now there, no fairness there. Even my scholars that are not higher than this book absolutely know what's going on. Pretty serious. True that, true that. There are certain Christian, I'll say apologists, that are not affiliated with the, uh, you know, vocab with Dr. Brown. There are Edomite Christian pastors or whatever that that will actually say there's there's a number of them, small number, but a number of them. And there's articles on it. If you do the research, that they do certain pastors do say that uh, Babylon is the U.S., is America. They do say it, and they'll link up scriptures and all that. If I went to Google right now, trust me, it'll, a bunch of articles will pop up on that. So there's certain uh, pastors, Edomite pastors, that will say that this is Babylon the Great. When it comes to Michael Brown, either, either he's lying, he's a small man, that's all. Well, he really doesn't know what the apologist means. They don't under the apologists do not understand. The ones of you that went to these uh, theological cemeteries, you do not understand prophecy. If you had under, if you under, if you understand prophecy, indeed, you would know why you have so-called black, so-called black Latino Indians on the street corners saying that they're Israelites and carrying around the 12 tribe sign. You would understand that that's the fulfillment of many scriptures, mainly Ezekiel 37, one of my favorite prophetic scriptures. Because we're in that time. We're still in the fulfillment. Look, Ezekiel chapter 37, part of, part of it has is coming, taking place in front of your eyes. The rest of it, the, 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 the 12 tribe sign, and then the part with David being set up and that's going back to the land is yet to take place. So we're still, um, Ezekiel 37 is still being fulfilled before our eyes. He really doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Let's get started with the Psalm 147. The Lord is only dealing with Israel. Really, when it comes to the Bible, the Lord's only dealing with the prophets. Apostles, the prophets, and the people. Ones that he has involved with the Holy Spirit. The book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, 147, He shows his word unto Jacob. See, his word is mainly the prophecies. And, and the spiritual content of the book dealing with Yahweh. Also, people call it Jesus Christ. But that's not his name. His name is the Holy Spirit. One we call Jesus Christ. The father of the so called black. Is a so called black. Not a so called black. He showed his word unto Jacob, the statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He's only dealing with Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. See? Not the small nations. The nation of Edom. And that happens to be Michael Brown, Michael Brown's nationality. Then, Give me a second. I'm back. But in Edom, it looks like Quaz. Quaz was one of the gods, so called gods, that the Edomites worshipped. He had not dealt so with any nation. Master his judgments, he had owned them. Mentioned Quaz. I didn't know he was going to mention Quaz. 
but uh, Quaz, Quaz looks, Dr. Brown looks just like he's a dead ringer for Quaz, which is a made up guy. When you go into the history of Esau, the, the God that Esau and the sons of Eden, Esau the worship was Yahweh. They were taught to worship Yahweh. Um, and they called on the name Yahweh. Remember, they spoke Hebrew. What happened was in history, when you do the research, I did videos on this. They were angry with um, their God, Yahweh. So they said, we're going we're gonna to come up with our own God. So they took some uh, Edomite and they said, we're going to liken this God unto one of one of our fellow Edomites. And um, they happened to pick a guy that looked just like Barry, Barry Manilow, a dead ringer for uh, Quaz and Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown is Quaz. Not Quasimodo, but Quaz. They have fun with this. Praise ye the Lord. See? That's why Michael Brown can successfully break down yeah, because he's quiet. What about the second judgment? What about this futuristic judgment that you said? There's going to be another event. I feel like I'm muted. Would you like to follow up? You have a minute if you want to. Yeah, I don't. came in the kingdom of Babylon. What about? So another thing is that you have about the, you have a minute to follow up or respond. Come on. Sometimes you need more than a minute. These, these, this is why we don't want to, this is why we don't engage in these debates. Because you're going to bring out the, the book you know, the, the, the rule book, you know? The judgment of the destroying wind. Did that judgment come on the new Babylonian Empire? Michael Brown? And if that's not the case, you know, what Babylon is going to be destroyed by that destroying wind? The sons of Jeremiah 51 and 1. Jeremiah 51 and 1. do so. Um, Dr. Michael Brown just uh, notated that there could potentially be a future uh, enemy in the world, Babylon. And um, that's the position that I would take here in Jeremiah 50. Um, and this, this, this part of Jeremiah, I believe, is actually in reference to mystery Babylon and not the present Babylon that he was experiencing. And uh, I'm glad that uh, Olive Brown mentioned mystery Babylon because it is a mystery. Not to the top even my scholars, though. They know that America is. God is talking about slaves for total destruction. They know that. Right? But the mystery, uh, the reason why it's called mystery Babylon is because many people don't know that America really is Babylon the Great. That's why it's a mystery. So, mystery Babylon. It is what it is. It's the book of Revelation 17 and 5. And again, Revelation 17 chapter, Revelation 18 chapter. Both those chapters is talking about America, known as Babylon the Great. So in the first verse, it says, and upon her, head, her forehead was a name written. That ain't talking about the Neo Babylonian Empire. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Why is it called the mother of harlots? Because America, the philosophy of America infiltrates the whole world. The whole world is, uh, is seduced. Mother of harlots means uh, mistress. Like it says, uh, what is that? Nahum 3, the mistress of witchcraft. I believe it's Nahum 3, which is uh, mistress of, of the head hoe. So she, you know, she, uh, Manages the other hoes as to what they can do and how how long they can lay with a man, how much is it going to cost? So these other nations that join into Babylon, the great or mystery, or the the mother of harlots, they become her 
they become her hoes, uh, so to speak. You know, that's why it's, I did a video on fornication in the spiritual sense, sense. I did a whole video covering that on fornication. That's um, in uh, Revelation 17 and Revelation uh, 18. They became drunk by the wine of the wrath of her fornication. They became hoes. Her, her, the mystery Babylon, the mother harlot, is to get as many hoes as she can get. She, the bigger the hole, the, the, the bigger the amount of holes, the bigger the brothel. And this is the brothel, the American system. Now the, philosoph the philosophies of the American, the American philosophy, the American dream, the American style of living. Right? America is this mother of harlots. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And if you look at it, the, the greatest harlots, and I'm talking about physical harlots, you know, spiritually, uh, everyone wants to live like the so-called American. They love that philosophy. But physically, America is known for its politics. Just look at Hollywood. What, 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 what does Hollywood do? Hollywood is a factory that turns out politics. Yeah, this, this place is, and they'll say it. The average Americans say, God, God, bless this place. God did this. We're a god friend, uh, uh, society, a god friend, country. None of you believe in the most high, the true God of the, of the Bible. You don't even have a Sabbath. Now, if uh, this guy, uh, Trump, comes back in the office, he's not going to call for a Sabbath. He's not going to call for um, Moses to be locked up. He, he gets, he gets, a, uh, he gets a, uh, a memo just like every other president before him. This is why we don't vote. Voting is a joke. So you know what I'm going to do? It says... Uh, and upon her forehead name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So let me go into the word abomination. And if you can't see it, please move on. Please, please just leave. Don't don't even tell me that you're leaving. Just go on. What was that? Revelation 17 and 5. I may go into the NLT. But I want to look up that word abominations. Psalms G 946. Bedelugma. Bedelugma. Delugma, a foul thing, a detestable thing of idols and things pertaining to idolatry. So, so this, this, this is all about, um, this place is a foul thing or a foul place, a detestable thing of idols. This is why you don't have a Sabbath. I remember the liquor stores used to be closed on Sunday. Then they opened them on Sunday, but you, you had to close another day, like a Monday. Now you can go to the liquor store every day. I remember, I remember when everything was closed as a child in the New York area, I remember everything was closed on a Sunday. Everything was closed on a Sunday. Nothing, nothing moved on a Sunday. And they had re religious shows all day with Edomites on Channel 9 in the New York tri-state area. Oh, Matt, I don't know how many precepts we got. We got six, six precepts, six times and six verses. Uh, Matthew 24, four verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. You know what these dumbass Christians, Christians say? When um, you see the Antichrist, it's not talking about their Antichrist. What this is talking about is um, during the time of 7 AD, when Vespasian led the Roman uh, legions. I'm sorry, not Vespasian, Titus. Vespasian, T Titus 
is the son of Vespasian. Vespasian was the emperor at that, at that time. His son was an inexperienced a general, and then he eventually became uh, emperor. And it was a man, Alexander Tiberius, uh, which I believe this that guy is uh, Austin, whatever his name is, the current uh, uh, department, uh, what do you call that? Um, a secretary of defense. His name is Austin something. And I, when I, every time I see him, I think of this guy, Julius Act, Tiberius Alexander. I always think of this guy. And that was a guy, that was a general that really, you know, brought down the, uh, the Israelites at that time. And he was an Israelite. He was a black man that grew up as an Alexandrian Israelite, meaning he was circumcised on the eighth day. He read from the Torah and the Tanakh. His family on both sides were Israelites. But they were living in a large community of Israelites in Egypt. But he, but he loved he loved the the Greco Roman setup. So he was killing his he was killing his people, knowing that he was an Israelite. He knew he was an Israelite killing other Israelites. What a niggas! What kind of nigga is that? And that's got to be this guy, Austin, whatever, whatever his name is. Just put in uh, Secretary of Defense. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, stand where it ought not, whosoever read, let him understand. That's during the time of the That's not talking about, you got some groups mistakenly will say, oh, that's talking about during the time of Antios. No, it's not talking about that time. Although that did happen. The abomination of desolation was that talking was referring to uh Antioch at that time there I am going into hit Roman history scratching the surface but this is talking about during the time period of 70 AD they raided the temple they raided the treasury to build the the Flav Flavian amphitheater which today is called the uh the Roman Colosseum but it was first called the Flavian Ample amphitheater look it up Mark 13 and 14. But when ye show, see the abomination, desolation spoken of in Daniel, or was it talking about the Romans? That's a uh, Daniel, the ninth chapter. It's not talking about the seven year tribulation and the, uh, the rapture and being left behind and the Antichrist. Christians don't, they, you know what they do? They're mocking birds. Okay, so here it is again. Uh, into the cup of cup in her hand full of abomin abominations, detestable things, and filthiness of her what? Fornication. That's why they're pushing that thing in Ghana and Uganda. They, they got this this demon, um, Kamala, Kamala Harris. You know, she's over there pushing that uh, alphabet agenda, that happy agenda, and they ain't with it. So anyway, let's do this. Let's go to Jeremiah 50. It's a little long. I'm not going to do the whole thing. But let's just jump around. Jeremiah 50, verse 1. The word that, that Yahweh spake against Babylon and against the land of the child begins by Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah the prophet received these visions, and he thought he was talking about the Babylon during his time, his lifetime. He was not talking about that. because So Jeremiah didn't understand it. He didn't, he didn't understand it was a miracle. We understand today. That's why we don't write books. The book's already written. Declare ye, declare ye among the nations and publish. It's talking about now. How, how are we to do it? Through the, through the web, through the YouTube. And set up a stand and publish and conceal not. This goes hand in hand with Isaiah 13. 
uh, can't conceal not. Don't hide it. Bring it out. Say Babylon is taken. Bell is confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Give me a second. Okay, that'll be the only phone call. I got two so phone calls today. Uh, declare years among the nations, prepare, um, set up a standard. And that's, that's talk, that's given to who? That's not given to generals, it's not given to kings. It's given to the prophets and all the, ap the apostles. When you go to the New Testament, it speaks about the order. The order starts with the apostles, then prophets, then teachers. So that's the order. The Most High is dealing with the apostles meaning the prophets. We, we are the modern day prophets because we're the only ones publishing this. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken. Merodach is broken in pieces. Idols are confounded. Or images are broken in pieces. Talking about this, um, when you go to uh, second Ezra's, uh, I mean, I'm not second Ezra's, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 10, verse 4. You know, where they knock down these uh, images through the spirit and knock down their lives. You really got to read this whole thing. It says, which I'm not going to do. It says, for out of the north uh, there come, cometh up a nation against her which shall make her land desolate, and that's Russia. Uh, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. In those days and in that time, say after Yahweh, the children of Israel shall, shall come, they and the children of Judah. That's why it didn't say the Jewish people. It said the children of Israel, the children of Israel were not with them at that time. They were all the way on the other side of the world. It said, and the children of Judah together going and weeping, they shall go and seek their power, Yahweh, the Most High. It's talking about right now. That's why there's so many camps out there and different Israelite groups out there. So they shall ask the way of Zion. What is that talking about? They, they're inquiring about this truth. They want to get deeper into the truth with their faces the wood saying come and let us join ourselves to Yahweh and a everlasting perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten and that's talking about right now remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flock that's talking about a particular wilderness. The seven used to say it was South America. So we're going to be delivered. We're going to land somewhere. Then we're going to take the whole world. And for lo, I will rise, a raise and cause to come up against Babylon, America, an assembly of nations. Now, what does it mean by an assembly of nations? When you get... Um, piece of furniture, you have to assemble it, right? So these are nations coming together. What is Russia doing right now? They're taking over Ukraine to bring it back, to assemble it with Russia. So you got the, uh, the BRICS nations. That's an assembly. And uh, Russia was a, 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 a number of republics, uh, states coming together under uh, a great state. That's a kingdom, kingdom against kingdom. America is a, what made them, what makes America great is, a, is this assembly of these different states. That's why the term is not the United States of America. That's a corporate, corporate term. That's a corporate America. That's, that's, uh, the term should be these United States of America. 
it says uh, a symbol of great nation from from the north from the north country that's Russia or the most north, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence shall she be taken. Babylon shall be taken. Uh, the arrow shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. It did not in vain. Arrows, arrows are the missiles. So let me jump. Let me do this. Well, let me try something. Bear with me for a minute. Jeremiah 51 and 1, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will rise, rise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a what? A destroying wind. What's this destroying wind? The uh, radiation, uh, when, the, when these missiles hit ground zero, you're gonna, a lot of you are gonna die from the initial impact, but then a lot more are gonna die from the radiation showed you that in the movie, the second installment of uh, The Terminator with, uh, what's her name, uh, Sarah Connor. She's looking at the little girls. Had a, looked like she had a, like a nursing outfit on and she grabbed the fence. There was a wind of fire that, that tore the, uh, melted the uh, flesh from her. And it was a skeleton holding the fence. We all know that scene. And that's going to happen. And she said, and that was a vision. <laughs> that was a vision that she saw. So what is uh, Cameron trying to tell us? Twelve verse, your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. And, and who's the mother of uh, Babylon, the new Babylon? You, the UK. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness. What does it mean by the hinder, hindermost of the nations? The, the, end of, the end of the nation. What's the end of the nations? The West. Canada, America, Central and South America. But it's talking specifically in the middle of America itself. Makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, every, it says everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at her plagues. What are her plagues? Fire. Her plagues shall come in one day, death, mourning, destruction, and she, she shall be utterly burned with fire. The bow is a silo. So Dr. Brown doesn't know that. That's why he said, well, there's another prophecy. Well, he doesn't know what the prophecy is because he doesn't know that this Babylon... It's talking about America. Even Jeremiah didn't even know. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? That's America. How is it? How do, how do we know that they're, they're a hammer? How do we know that America represents the representative of the hammer? because they have over 800 military bases scattered throughout the whole planet Earth. Um, how is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? A desert. The Lord has opened his armory. What, what do you have in an armory? Your ass assembly of weapons. Let me go to the word armory. Let me get ready to close. Go to the word armory.
The word is awatazah. Awa, awatazar. Treasure storehouse. Storehouse. Uh, treasure house. Treasure. Ooh. Magazine of weapons. Figurative, figuratively of God's armory. Storehouse of God for rain, snow, hell, and sea, wind and sea. So this, this is what I wanted. Magazine of weapons. Ataza, to store up, save, lay, to store up, make treasure, treasured. So one of his treasures um, are these missiles. You in trouble, Esau. You, you in big trouble. And this thing can't come fast enough. There it goes again, 29. Call together the archers against Babylon. All ye that bend the bow, camp against it, around about. They're gonna they're gonna be encircled. So the, so these missiles are coming from different angles, from the west, from the east, from the north, and from the south. Mainly from the west and the east. Let none there thereof escape. You're not gonna be able to escape this. It said these missiles can go from Russia to uh America in 25 minutes or less. Where are you going to go to in 25 minutes when all hell breaks loose? See, and even if these so-called scholars knew this, they're not going to go into it, man, because you're not going to say, you're not going to come out, frame your mouth to say that this is talking about America. Uh, the most proud. Who's the most proud? Esau. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall rise up, raise him up, and I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the children of Yasha Allah, the sons of Yasha Allah, and the sons of Judah, not the Jewish people, were oppressed together. We're being oppressed right now. Hey, the Latin tribes, go, go to any hood. You're going to see Jake. You're going to see Benjamin. You're going to see uh, Levi. You're going to see uh, Ephraim. You're going to see, um, you know, Simeon. You're going to see all them different tribes. You're going to see Issachar, right, working in stores. And all that took them captives, held them fast, held them tight. They refused to let them go. Their redeemer is strong. Yahweh of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land. What does it mean, plead their cause? When you plead for something, you're, we're waking up and we're saying, Lord, save us, save us, save us, save us. Lord, Yahweh of hosts, save us. I'm tired of this mess. Save us, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh of hosts. So the most high going to say, okay, y'all put in the plea. When you go to court, you sue somebody. At the end, at the end of this, when you do your paperwork, you bring in your initial paperwork uh, against you. You're the plaintiff against the um, the defendant, right? Or you're the uh, what is the other term? Is it in a, in in, um, in contract law? It's called uh, the respondent. What's the other thing? Which is like a defendant and a and a uh, anyway, I can't think of it. Somebody put it in the thing, but in, in contract law is different. Uh, I think it's petitioner and responded or something like that. I used to know that, but anyway, we're putting in a plea that after you put bring all the charges at the end of all your charges on your initial uh, brief. 
you put in your plea. I plead that I get a million dollars from this guy, get to kick him in the ass five times or whatever. So that's what we're doing. We're putting in pleas to the head judge. And so he he weighed the evidence and he see, he sees that they they did wrong against you guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna find him guilty and then I'm gonna sentence him and, and the sentence is gonna be based on your plea. So anyway, with that I'm gonna say Shalom.